So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the father doing. Now, throughout the Old Testament scripture, what did the father do? The father was judging the nations. So Jesus saying, well, that's what I see my father doing. For whatever the father does, that the son does likewise. For the father loves the son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him so that you may marvel. Jesus was going to be given a work that when he performs this greater work, the Jews would marvel. This greater work that Jesus was given by his by his father to accomplish would be accomplished in the time of that generation because they would see it and they would marvel. Verse 21, for as the father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the son gives life to whom he will. Remember Daniel chapter 12, where Michael would be the one who would awaken the dead. Some would awaken to life and some would awaken to everlasting condemnation or contempt here it is the father judges no one but has given all judgment to what the son now when it says the father judges no one it means no one in that generation because throughout the history of israel the father was judging but in this instance with this last generation he gave the judgment to his son and so the son with the sword out of his mouth would be given the authority to smash that earthen vessel with the rod of iron and the result of that judgment that all may honor the son just as they honor the father all may honor the son all of god's people that is not the whole world with the heathen and the unbelievers the believers in god would honor his son with the honor that they honor the father it says whoever and whoever again is whoever of god's people does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him right that was jesus's declaration that was jesus's testimony now in the revelation it is being shown how that judgment authority how jesus executed that judgment authority according to what was written so that the honor would be given to the son which also is given to the father look at revelation chapter 5 verse 11 it says then i looked and i heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels numbering myriads and myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb isn't this giving isn't this ascribing honor and these are all the multitudes numbering myriads and myriads and thousands of thousands of living creatures the elders the angels all these mighty beings in the spirit realm are ascribing honor to the lamb well, who is the lamb? The lamb is the son of the living God because it says the lamb who was slain, Jesus Christ, the righteous one who was crucified on the cross as the Lord's Passover, right? Worthy is him to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Now look, and I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. These are all of God's people. Because you remember, everyone who is in Christ is a new creature. So this creature refers to the people of God. It's not referring to the, the unbelievers. Not referring to the whole wide world. It's referring to the people of God, right? The family of God in heaven, on earth, under the earth. So these who, who, who were in Hades at that time. And in the sea, among the Gentile peoples, and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne, that's the father, and to the lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the foreign living creature said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. So the son of God revealed to the end that the glory, the honor that was ascribed to his father would be ascribed to him by God's people. So Philippians chapter two and verse 10. So 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. So before I continue reading this verse, because I'm in the English Standard Version, and I know that many of the mainstream Bible would word this as at the name. But in the Greek, it is actually in the name. So again, let me show you. Let's, let's look at the Young's literal translation. Notice it says that in. That means those who are in covenant with the Father through Christ. Okay? In the name. Because God has placed all his people in Christ now. Right? That, so we come in to God through Christ. Christ now. Let's look at another translation. Let's look at, for example, the literal standard version. It says that in the name. So it's in the covenant. This is talking about the covenant people of God. This is the new covenant people of God. Let's look at the Rotterdam emphasized Bible. It says in order that in the name. Okay. So I, I give three, I give three witnesses. Good. So that should establish it. Right. So let's, let's read it from the literal standard version that in the name of Jesus, every knee may bow of heavenlies and earthlies and what are under the earth. And every tongue may confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of who the father. Again, that the honor that is ascribed to the Father may be ascribed to the Son. You remember Jesus would say to us, Let your light so shine among men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Well, that is exactly what Jesus did. He let his light shine before us. And when we saw that light, we glorified his Father which is in heaven. 